liked your night better. I should have done that. I didn't know where you were going. Yeah, no, it was per- it was perfect. It was, it was perfect, perfect just the way it was. Yeah, yeah, B. Yeah, yeah no, it was planned dissonance. Mm-hmm. It was cool. Minor third. Like oh, sometimes, right. like you'll play a B. Uh huh. Like, right. You'll play a B, and then I'll just be sitting there, be like. Try ten. Oh, oh man, right. it's so good. Like everybody takes that, right? Hey, I'm Ken from Reverend Guitars, and yeah. I'm hanging with my boy Will from Mason Music in Birmingham, right. Alabama. Here we are. Here we are. We're checking out some guitars. So uh, we are. Ken is in town. Uh, we're hanging out with him tonight, and a couple of the guys from St. Paul and the Broken Bones. Yeah. Uh, some of our friends here in Birmingham, Alabama. They're really blowing up right now. Mm-hmm. Good at music. and singing. Yeah, they're good at music. They're good at the music. They're really good at the music. Yeah. Um, but we're checking out right now, we're going to check out the Matt West. Matt West. Yes. Tell me about this guitar. Uh, Matt plays in the band Neck Deep out of the UK, and they are, uh, they were, well, right now, it's October 2017. I always feel the need to tell people that. You gotta put a timestamp. But because, yeah, a couple years from now, they're, everybody's yeah. gonna be like, yeah, we know who Matt West is. That guy won't shut up. Right. He's the prime minister. <laughs> I, 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 he might be. Yeah. Anyway, uh, Matt rules, and his band Neck Deep is awesome. They were one of the main acts on the Warped Tour in 2017. Okay. Uh, this year in the States, uh, they have a new record out that's doing really well. They're touring Europe right now. And they'll be back in the U.S. in early 2018. Uh, hopefully, he swings by Anaheim and hangs out with us in January. Mm-hmm. Uh, so Matt came through Reverend in the late summer 2016 when they were touring their last record, and he um, his management reached out to me and they were like, "Yeah, we you know, guitar player in, in the band." I'm going to be brutally honest when I tell the story. <laughs> guitar player in the band Neck, Neck Deep wants to check out some guitars, and I was like, "Oh, cool." I where where Reverend is located in Toledo, Ohio, is not too far from the Turnpike, uh, the eighty ninety that goes across the whole country, right? Okay. And then it's also not too far from seventy five, which goes from Key West to Sault Ste. Marie. And so a lot of we, it, the cool thing, we get a lot of touring bands that like to stop in and, and check out our stuff, and then we get to see our artists a lot as they travel and everything because we're pretty easily accessible. So Neck Deep was going from Cleveland to Grand Rapids and coming through our area, and they asked if they could come by, you know, like 8 or 9 in the morning. Uh-huh. And I'm like, oh, sure, yeah, we'd love to have one. I write it on my calendar. And um, that morning comes along, and this big old tour bus pulls into the parking lot, pulling the trailer, and I was like, I don't know what I was expecting. I was expecting, like, a van, a bunch of dudes in a van. Right. Like, right, right. Like, yeah. I'm like, whoa. Oh. So, so I'm, like, in my office, like, Googling them. Like, <laughs> where are these guys from? What are they from? Oh, I like because yeah, you didn't know. I, I can't keep up on everything. I try my best. What I should have done was called my daughter because when I told she my knows. daughter he, he was there, she was like, yeah. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, uh, he came in and got a Jetstream 390 and a double agent for me and to use in the rest of the tour. Cool. Three days later, he calls me and says, I've used that Jetstream three nights in a row. It's the best guitar I've ever played. It's my favorite guitar of all time. I love this guitar. I'm going to be buried with this guitar. Do you guys do any custom work? And I was like, you just said it was like your favorite guitar of all time. Yeah, what do we what, need to change? Yeah, you know, what do we need to change? Yeah. And he was like, dude, if you did this guitar with just the bridge pickup and a reverse headstock, that would be it. And right there on the phone, having known the guy for three days, I'm like, I could see it in my head. Yeah. And I was like, dude, you want to do a SIG model? And he was like, are you serious? And I'm like... <laughs> Yeah, it's your idea, yeah, and it's a good one. Sure. So I want to make that. So let's put your name on it. You know, and yeah, that's uh, cool. and he was he was into it. So here we are. I mean, uh, we had it out. Uh, we launched it at the Summer Nam Show here in 2017. Uh, they call him the Guitar Wizard over there in the UK. If you look at the back of the headstock, it's got his fun little uh, wizard graphic that he sent us. And he draws that on every single one, right? Yeah, every single one he draws that on. <laughs> yeah. yeah, We didn't get the artwork from him and scan it and have it under the clear coat. No. Not like normal people would Of course do. not. Um, Matt West, also a fan of the ever-elusive reverse headstock. Mm. Um, I, we were talking about it. I, the yeah. reverse headstock is just cool. cool. Yeah. I think they're cool. I think they look cool. I think our logo in, in particular looks really cool on our headstock, um, on, on our reverse headstock. I just think it's it's neat the way it's laid out. There's there's a myth with the reverse headstock that by having the longer string length mm-hmm. on the low E that you have to crank, wind up that low tune, that string tighter hmm. to get it to pitch. Right. And so because of the longer string length, you get this real big pop. Naylor tells me that that, that is in fact myth. It is a myth. Because 
really you're looking at the string length between the nut and the bridge and, and the same the same tension right gets it to, to pitch to pitch if you change the so, tension you change the pitch but I have dudes argue with me about this, and so I've decided that this is not my fight. So leave that it I in the comments to, below. <laughs> right, right. I am not going to live and die on that statement. Yeah. But, um, but there's, you know, there's reverse headstock guitars, and and having that low E string on the long stretch of tuning is an unprecedented. Look at Mr. Dick Dale. He's been doing that for years. He's got his guitar yeah. strung upside down and he plays left-handed or whatever and it's, it, that's a thing. Well, I feel um, like it kind of makes you look like Jimi Hendrix or something. Like people think you're doing something weird and different like, oh dude, look, he's playing yeah, yeah. backwards or something. I think it looks cool. I think, I think you know, with the, um, with the body shape, with the offset waist, the body is kind of slanted like this and then you have the slant of the headstock. To me, it kind of all goes together. I think they're pretty good looking. Um, Really funny thing about this guitar, I don't know why I'm telling you this, but you know, I just talk and worry about the consequences later. Uh, somebody posted um, a picture, we do this in black and we do it in powder yellow, and somebody posted the pictures of those guitars next to each other on a Facebook fan site called Ugly Guitars, mm. which I belong to, uh -huh, and people post pictures of ugly guitars on this thing and then, and you know, thousands of people belong to this group and people just hammer on stuff yeah. that's so brutal. So this guy posts the two Matt West on Ugly Guitars and he got beat down so hard by uh, people who love us. Yeah. It was the greatest. He felt like, like I, oh, I did. I was like, because <laughs> when I saw him come up there, I'm like, oh no, like, oh, I'm going to, like, I, sh I shouldn't read the comments. Right, I should just right. walk away. And then I started reading the comments and they were like, these are sick, man. What are you talking about? Those are beautiful. Yeah. Oh, I can't wait to get one. I can't wait. And, and like, you can't, you know, you can sit around and worry about how you're going to advertise for something. And then something like that comes along and just yeah. like goes crazy. And, and so we're getting the word out about this thing any way we can. That's right. Including uh, having one here at Mason Mead. That's right. That's right. Yeah, well, yeah. it's funny how social media kind of cuts both ways. Like you can really, your reputation can be damaged very easily. Right? Yes. Yes. Uh, but if you, I feel like this has been our experience anyways. If you put out good work and if you treat your customers right, even when you do have someone who posts something negative, your community kind of speaks up for you. You don't even have to do it yourself. I can see that. Yeah. I get that. But if you aren't doing it right, then you get just railed. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, and the bigger you get, uh, now now we're, we're we've left the guitar zone. Now, yeah. Now we're just talking about, but that's okay. Yeah. No, that's cool. <laughs> um, the bigger you get, the more difficult it is to stay on top of like little customer service issues and things like that. And one of, one of the things that we pride ourselves on at Reverend is I try to treat your customers that come into your store and mm -hmm. buy stuff as my customers. Right. And we we respond to stuff that we get that we shouldn't respond to <laughs> all the time. Miss Penny's over here going, yes, yes, we do. But it's important because I mean, in the end, um, the music industry itself is much smaller than people, um, on the outside looking in or are sort of led to believe. Um, one statistic that I throw around completely uh, unfounded, I couldn't like, point to the research right. and show you this. But somebody told me this at the NAMM show one day. Um, somebody told, and they said that if you take all of um, musical instrument manufacturing globally, and that includes you know like Yamaha and all the biggest brands in the world, sure. and you added up all of the business that all of us do mm -hmm. in a year, mm -hmm. it's less than the automobile industry does in a day. Wow. Which it makes you feel real small. <laughs> but it, it, but and and this was less than the automobile industry does in a day, like in the states. Right. Not not even. Not, not even globally. Yeah. You know. Um, so it's not a huge industry, and and while everybody sort of knows somebody who plays guitar or whatever, yeah. the guitar players have a tendency to all know each other. And one of the reasons my company has a good reputation is because I take care of everybody. Absolutely. Well, we've had a good you know? partnership, like with a customer who. Bought a Reverend somewhere else, not from us, and needed a repair done. And yeah. and you got in touch with me, and we had our repair guy take care of it, and they didn't have to ship it anywhere. And, you and know. we took care of you, and yeah, it's sure, right, sure, it's important. Yeah. And then, well, then, and then, of course, I want those guys to come in and meet you and see all the cool stuff that you have going on down here, because I, I'm like, in, it's one of those things with online retail where where some people either love it or hate it. I don't have a feel for it in, in really in, in either direction. 
I have taken advantage of the convenience of, of online retail sure. for for a yeah. lot of different things, electronics and things of that nature, and instrument based stuff, sure. Um, because you know it's difficult to find stuff, but you always got to think in the back of your mind, what does my local music store have? Yeah. What can I walk in and see? Get my hands you know, on and get my and, and not even just stores like you, but stores like Sam Ash and GC and stuff. Is me, you know, it, the, like it's a favorite thing on on online to like bash Guitar Center and do all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And I get it, you know what I mean. But there's crummy people that work everywhere. Absolutely. And and all of the all of us working together are what sort of make this industry work. Kumbaya, baby. <laughs> yeah. I said I agreed with you that there are crummy people that work everywhere, but. There's not any crummy people here. No, not at no, not at Mason Music. We don't, no. We don't there's no them. there's no crummy people at Reverend either. Not one. No. no. Not one. Well, it's it's cool to see the <laughs> except for this one. Uh, <laughs> the way that you guys take care of not only your customers but the artists you work with and you know, watching interviews and just hearing from people who have worked with other guitar companies that we won't name and then they come work with Reverend and it's just a different experience because you guys really get it because you're in it to make music. It's not to make money, you know? It's like, I want to put out an instrument that people are going to take on the road and do something creative with. And it's not about, I mean, yeah, you got to make money. It's a business, but... I couldn't have said it better myself. Yeah. Hey, we're going to let you go. I am Ken from Reverend Guitars, and this is Will from Mason Music. We've been talking about the Matt West signature model. And internet. And the internet. <laughs> and the internet. Yeah, yes. you guys enjoy. I, I I hope they put this video out just like it stands. Yeah. But believe it or not, is you if you can see the sun coming in from the windows right now, customers are lining up outside the door. So we gotta let you go. That's right. Bye.